Our next speaker is Nancy Harrington. She is a speech language pathologist, and uh, we, also, we almost need a speech language specialist uh, up here to introduce her, but bear with me. She is the lead assistive technology specialist and assistant regional coordinator for the Florida Alliance for Assistive Services and Technology at the Atlantic Region Assistive Technology Demonstration Center. She is a clinical instructor at the University of Central Florida in a communications disorder clinic in Orlando. Ms. Harrington has 30 years of clinical experience with individuals and their families with uh, disability issues. And today she'll be speaking to us about how technology may be used to assist with communication issues associated with the ataxias. Ms. Harrington. Good morning, everybody. Um, I hear you're having a wonderful conference, um, and um, there's lots of, been, lots of new exciting developments, I see, um, in terms of looking at the treatment of ataxia. But what I am going to talk to you now today is about communication. And I do know that you know, many individuals with ataxia may have dysarthria of speech, and as a result, it can affect, over time, the production of clear speech and interferes with effective communication. So this morning, um, I just to know that I have um, no disclaimers. I'm receiving no funds by any vendor or such for this. Um, this I'm going to talk to you a little bit about FAST, the Florida Alliance for Assistive Services and Technology, just briefly. Um, and then I'm going to talk about assistive technology and AAC, or augmentative and alternative communication. I'm going to talk about why an iPad. I'm going to talk about some key AAC apps that may be useful for individuals with ataxia who need some assistance with their communication. I'm going to go over a few little technical tips that can assist for someone with the motor disability associated with access of these apps, and then I'll highlight a few resources. So FAST is, it's, we're actually a nonprofit organization and we are the Tech Act program for Florida. I know many of you come from other states in the country and each state has a Tech Act, okay? We are the Florida Tech Act, and our mission is to improve the quality of life for all Floridians with disabilities, and this is done through advocacy, awareness activities, in order to increase access to and acquisition of assistive services and technology. And it's not always just the technology, just the device, but it's also those services that assist in use of the device. And in Florida here, we have regional demonstration centers throughout the state. And you can see them in the slide there on the map. Um, oops, let me move forward. You can see on the, um, oops, sorry about that. Let's get the, seems to have lost the map somehow. But um, uh, you saw Florida was kind of carved out. And our, in Florida, we have regional demonstration centers and I'm from the Atlantic Regional Demonstration Center. And we provide information to people about assistive technology, we do assessments, training, presentations like this, and we have a device lending library so people can try out equipment to see, hey, does this meet my needs before I go and purchase something or see if my insurance will fund something. There's also a device recycling and refurbishment um, facility as well. Someone was talking to me earlier at the exhibit um, they were looking for a power chair, so they're going to investigate to see if some refurbished power chairs might be available for that individual. There's also an alternative financing program, um, the New Horizon Loan Program, which is a way for someone to actually kind of get a low interest alternative financing for, for um, purchase of assistive technology. Now, all of these are through the Tech Act program, and you would have similar facilities in other states throughout the country. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about assistive technology. What is it? It's actually any item or piece of equipment, 
product or system, whether it's acquired commercially, it could be off the shelf, modified, customized, but the key thing is that it's used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. And it can assist anybody with physical, learning, cognitive, sensory impairments, or communication impairments. This is one of my favorite quotes. For people without disabilities, technology makes things easier. For people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. How many of you have iPhones or iPads? Okay, you know that predictive text thing that when you type and they predict the words, it isn't always exactly what you want, <laughs> but it's there and it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it, to, to type out what you want um, to create for your message. Well, that technology was originally developed for people with physical disabilities years and years ago. I've been doing this for decades, and before it was available, before iPhones or even cell phones, um, this type of technology was available for computer-based um, assistive technology to facilitate people with physical disabilities with their writing, their typing, and communication. So I'm going to talk a little bit about communication and what we call AAC. Now, just I want to know a little bit about your communication today. And what I would like to know is, okay, why do you communicate? Maybe anybody throw out a few. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's real important. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay? Yeah, yeah. That's all there. I think you, you saw that. That's right. And very often, when people first think of how can I assist with communication, they're thinking about okay, I want to be able to ask for things, I want to be able to express my needs. Um, and ask for what I want. Sometimes that's maybe overused, you know, it's, and that's sometimes you see a device and it's set up and it, it's all about I want, I want, I want. But when we think about communication and developing an, a system for someone who has communication needs, we need to make sure that they can meet all these communicative functions. We need to make sure not only can you express your needs and wants, but also that you can exchange information. You can tell stories about the vacation that you went on or you're going on next month. You can go back home to the different parts of the country where you've come from and you can tell about the Ataxia Conference in Orlando and all the people you met and all the exciting innovations that you've heard about. You can ask people questions. I'm sure at the conference you've been asking loads of questions to um, your colleagues and other people that you've met at the conference, as well as the presenters and the exhibitors and all the people that you're meeting here. So you need to be able to exchange that information with others. And then social. There are lots of social events that have been happening um, here over the weekend associated with the conference. Um, and also when we think about um, the social closeness that we have with our family members so that you can help to develop and maintain those personal relationships. Um, and then there's the social etiquette routines, things like knowing, oh, hello, how are you today? You know, you pass someone in the, in the corridor, oh, good morning, you know, did you have a nice weekend? Or th those social things that you, you use, those routines that help to, you to interact with other people. Um, I lived in Ireland for 20 years, and in Ireland, everybody likes to talk about the weather. And there's a lot of rain, and it's not often that there is sunshine like there is in Florida and fine weather. But a social etiquette routine in Ireland was very much, okay, when you meet someone, you may talk about the weather. <laughs> it's very much an introduction strategy. Um, and there, you know, there will be different places have different cultural social etiquette routines depending upon where you come from. But it's basically your social conventions of politeness as well.
Now, forms of communication, this has really changed over the last number of years. In the past, so much of our communication was just that face-to-face, that interaction as you're talking with someone face-to-face or on the phone and such. And then written communication might have been through letters and, and such. But now, these days, between social media and email and texting, so much of communication is through the written modality. Or, and the telecommunication has expanded. It's not just talking on the phone, but you may be Skyping or using FaceTime or any of those applications that allow you to have that face-to-face communication and talk with someone over the, using Wi-Fi or the Internet. I teach this class to students at the University of Central Florida, and I also do a lot of presentations around talking about communication. And I often throw out to the group that I'm speaking to, I say, you know, how do you communicate? What are the forms of communication that are most commonly used? And previously, it always used to be face-to-face. That was it. You know, people would say talking, talking. That was, and they, you know, facial expression gestures. But what I'm finding now, there's been a shift over the last couple of years that people are coming up with, they're talking about things like social media and texting and messaging and all that. That's actually the first thing they say. And I find it quite interesting. This is actually a shift in our culture in terms of how we communicate. And that assistive technology or technology, which maybe was used and helped to improve the quality of life for people with disabilities previously has now become so mainstream. I'm going to show you some applications on iPad that are similar to things on dedicated speech generating devices which can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. No longer do you have to spend $7,000 for a dedicated speech generating device, but there might be an application on an iPad that may work. And it's also a tool that everybody has. It's not something that's necessarily so specialized. But when we talk about people who are using assistive technology to facilitate their communication, they need to realize all these forms of communication. Yes, we want them to be able to speak face to face with others, but we also want them to be able to use written communication and telecommunication and all that. So when we look at an AEC system, we're looking at all the strategies that come together to make an effective means of communication. So for some, there might be symbols or it might be, you know, words and letters, the strategies and techniques they might use to get someone's attention and to help them to listen to them communicating using an alternative mode. Um, And... It's just because you introduce technology, it doesn't mean this is the be-all to end-all. When we introduce what we call augmentative and alternative communication, and that's why we call it augmentative, because it's not necessary to replace the speech that you may have, but it's to supplement it. So we look at a system that incorporates everything, what natural speech is available, um, any gestures, um, any lower tech strategies that someone might use, whether it's a spelling board or they might write notes, or, um, and also any high tech strategies that we might introduce and I'm going to show you here today. So again, AAC is all forms of communication that enhance supplement or replace speech and or writing. So, and over here you can see examples of, it could be signing, it could be a communication book like that, or it could be an iPad. And really a candidate for AAC is anybody who isn't meeting all their communication needs through natural speech. And we don't necessarily wait until someone is completely frustrated and has no speech at all. Maybe everybody in your family can understand you and people that know you and are very familiar with your speech patterns. But maybe then when you're at work or you're out in the community and you're talking to other people, that maybe that's when you need to use assistive technology with people who maybe aren't as familiar with your speech patterns and where they are at this stage. So 
So really, we look at AAC services for individuals um, where their natural speech is inadequate to meet all their daily communication needs. And they might have no access to natural speech, or they might be at risk for um, speech development, or as I mentioned, some speech, but it's not meeting at all. Um, or that it's functional in some context with people very familiar um, and with very specific partners, but maybe needs some assistance with communication partners who aren't that familiar. Or it might be a temporary fix for someone um, whose speech may recover. With children, we often use um, AAC to help children develop their communication skills. And just a point, very often people say, oh, well, if we introduce AAC, it's going to be a crutch and they're no longer going to speak if they're able. But the research tells us that AAC doesn't hinder, but it actually aids speech production with children with developing language still skills. So we want to make sure that we can facilitate someone to establish a basic means of communication. We want to make sure that their communication is functional in a range of different contexts. We want to alleviate that frustration that's associated with not being able to communicate effectively. We want to close that gap between someone who understands an awful lot but isn't able to express themselves. We often look at promoting language development, make, ensuring there's a system, um, system set up that has a range of vocabulary and allows individuals to generate their own language, not just a bunch of pre-stored messages, but that can, they can actually map what's in your head, in their head, onto the language system that the device is um, utilizing. Sometimes it can facilitate speech development. Um, it can also enhance educational or vocational opportunities. You know, if slurred speech or decreasing ability to produce speech is interfering with ability to seek or continue employment, it might be that with aided communication that you can help to improve that communication with the range of communication partners and help to actually remain employed. And ultimately what we're looking for is increased participation in all aspects of society. So if we can provide assistive technology to facilitate the production of speech so that individuals can participate in all walks of life, then that's what we're going to do. And we find too, it can be very frustrating for someone who isn't able to meet all their needs with their speech and without aided communication. So it can actually reduce challenging behaviors associated with this frustration. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about iPads and tablets that can be used to help speech. So there's the iPad and there's the iPad mini. And there's also what I'm talking about as a chat wrap. I'm going to show you an iPad here. And it's, it's a case, but it actually has a kind of a Bluetooth speaker attached to it um, in order to make the speech louder. There are dedicated iPads that, when I say dedicated, a dedicated speech generating device is a communication aid that can be funded by insurance. Most insurances will not fund iPads, although there are some states that are starting to, but not in Florida, but there are some states that are. But they will fund what they call dedicated speech generating devices. So there are a couple of dedicated iPads out there. One of them is the Quick Talker Freestyle, where they've locked down the other functions, and uh, ProSlate um, by Forbes Rehab Services. And th these are iPads that have had functions locked down, and I've had them funded through Medicare and some other insurances. Then there's Android tablets, which, again, these aren't dedicated, so they're probably not funded by insurance, but many of you may have an Android or maybe an old iPad, too, that's lying around, and it might be just a matter of getting the application on it and maybe an external speaker to have the volume of the speech loud enough for a busy, noisy environment. And then there's what we call, again, those dedicated devices, those dedicated speech-generating devices 
Um, and there's a Nova Chat devices. Um, I have brought a few examples. This one is what's called the Dynavox T10, um, and they come in different sizes. There's larger ones. Um, this one is a device uh, by a company called PRC, and it's an Accent 1000. Again, um, look very similar now to tablets and iPads. They've changed a lot over the years, but these, these are devices that are in fact funded by insurances. And there are lots of apps that just keep coming more and more. Um, and some of the AEC apps, there are some that are symbol-based and some that are text-based. Um, these are a few of the ones that are symbol-based. And then the ones I'm going to go over today are some of the text-based apps. Now, what I have here is I have a little bit of a chart, and I believe you, you all will have the handout. Some of them are for iOS, a lot more of them for our iPad-based. But there are an increasing number of apps that are actually becoming available for Android. Um, but a lot of the, I'm going to, I will demonstrate when I finish up the slides, we're going to swap screens and I'm going to demonstrate some of these apps. Um, Predictable is a very common one that you can use and you can use with selection with your finger, but then there's also the option of using switch scanning as well. Um, Proloquo for text um, comes in a range of different languages as well. It's another one that they don't have the scanning option, but they have the option to use your finger to select. Um, there's a range of other ones. Rocket Keys is another one. Um, Speak It is one that I'm going to show you that is actually, um, it doesn't, it's not as full featured as some of the other ones, but it's actually a very cheap one that's about $2.99, and it's something that may work for some, but it doesn't have um, some of the features that I will show you that um, Predictable and some of the others have that actually make it a little bit easier if you have tremors and such. Um, but you can see there's a, there's a range of different ones. Um, Flipwriter AC is another one where it actually, you can, the person that you're looking at, it has um, a view of what you're typing as well as you having a view of it. And as you see, there's a few that are coming um, into Android as well. And what I have here is just a comparison table of um, the text-based apps. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you some of them, as I said. Some of them have higher quality voices. Some of them have what you call um, the potential for blended um, voices. Uh, predictable allows for this. Proloquo for text allows for this. Um, the one with predictable is called Model Talker. And if you know that your speech is deteriorating and you would like to actually de develop a synthesized voice using your own voice, then you can actually record, I think you record about 3,000 sentences and they will create a synthesized voice that sounds very similar to your voice before your speech had a, has actually deteriorated. So that is becoming increasingly common um, and some people um, are very interested in that as well. And these are just a few AAC web-based resources um, that provide a lot of information about using augmentative and alternative communication. So what I'd like to do next is I would like to, um, I'm, I'm going to go into the iPad and I'm going to go through some of the apps and I'm also going to look at a few technical tips and just talk about some of the things that you can do. I don't know how familiar many of you are with iPads and the functions of iPad. Can I have a show of hands of how many people have either an iPad or an iPhone? Okay, that's fantastic. So a lot of you are very familiar. Guided access is, you're, you may be familiar with some of the features of that, which make the iPad or the iPhone more accessible. Um, we also use it with kids that we don't want going into other apps. We can literally lock it into the communication app so they don't spend time watching YouTube videos when we want them to be able to communicate. Um, some of the apps will allow you to back up 
your information to either Dropbox or they might have their own cloud-based um, system called iShare, which is, which is another one. And that way, if something happens to your iPad and you get another one, you have all your information that you've saved is there. Um, I'm going to show you some screen adjustments to aid touch access um, as your fine motor skills may be affected and there may be some trimmers and difficulties, so I'm going to show that. Um, as I say, some of them have, allow for switch access um, and you can do things like adjust symbol sizes, things like that. Um, so I'm not going to do much with the hiding or revealing buttons because I'm going to be focusing on the text-based. So what I'm going to do is after I go through the iPad because I'm going to have to switch screens and then if there, you have any questions, feel free to speak up. Okay. So can we swap out to the iPad now? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, this is the screen of what I used to greet you this morning. Hello, how are you all this morning? Okay, um, and this app is actually called Predictable. Okay, so with this particular app, you can literally type what you want to say. So I may say, and it has word prediction. You can see on the screen there, so very similar to what you might have on your phone. Um, so I don't necessarily have to type every letter of every word. What are you doing this weekend? Okay. So the other thing that it allows for is if we go into phrases, you can have phrases that are actually pre-stored. I can understand everything you say and I use this iPad to speak. Please wait while I type my message. So that you can either um, type word by word or if there are messages and phrases that you use quite frequently, then you can store them in advance. Here you have, you know, they're stored under categories, favorites, chat, help, food and drink, questions, out and about, things I like to do. And with this app, you're able to actually add any category you like. You're not restricted to these categories. And then within the category, you can just add write and create your own messages to save. Where are we going? So. This particular app is called Predictable and I believe it costs about $160. Um, which is more expensive than, you know, what you, many of your apps are. But the size of the keys makes it a little bit easier to access, and it does offer the potential for switch scanning if necessary um, at some point. It also allows you to, there are some features that make access easier, as I mentioned before, if you have um, tremors and such. I'm going to show you right now. It's set at a very light touch. So if I, okay was if I have tremors, um, I could maybe make mistakes. So I may not want to leave it on that setting. So there's a setting here that I can do if I go into access and I go into my direct touch settings, I can actually change my key hold time. So I'm going to just change it slightly to 0.2. And now what's going to happen is if I just touch lightly, it's not going to select. But I just have to hold down very, very slightly. I don't have to hold down too long, 
but you can make it longer or shorter depending upon your needs. It is nice to meet you. Okay. But it allows it, it makes it a little bit easier, again, for someone if, if you have some issues with tremors so that you don't make error selections. So you can customize that based upon your own motor needs. So that's, that's a nice feature of that particular app, Predictable. There's another app that's similar. It's called Proloquo for Text. Here you can see the keyboard is very similar to what you're familiar with with your iPad. Um, with this one, um, you have your pre-stored phrases as well. So here's a pre-stored. I can understand everything you say, but I use this program to talk because my speech is hard to understand. Okay, there's other quick sentences you, you, you might have that you can um, put there. There might be, um, you know, you can store your health information, social, whatever your categories are. Um, How are you? So again, we have pre-stored messages, or you can type the message that you would like to type yourself, um, I might say. So, and you, that has a highlight feature on it. You don't have to have that on. Um, but again, very similar to the other one. Um, it also, the, one of the benefits of this one, it has multiple languages. So if someone is bilingual, you can actually change the language um, to another language. This one, I believe, is about $120. You know, these specialized apps do tend to be a bit more expensive. Here's the cheap one I was talking about. It's only $2.99. And um, this one is, again, you have your iOS keyboard, and you can see it has, has some prediction there as well. So okay. Very similar to the, uh, the other ones. One of the things that you can do as well is you can also store phrases as well. So I'm going to save that phrase. So here I have a number of saved phrases that you just scroll through. So this is the one I just produced. I am happy to see you. I'll put another one. While this is, this is a great starter app, if um, you know, you're able to manage that keyboard, but it doesn't have the facilities to adjust the screen to um, accommodate some of the fine motor difficulties that someone might have or you know, with tremors and such. Sometimes using a stylus, now this is just a pen with a stylus, you know, sometimes that's enough to just help rather than just using your hand, and it might be easier to type using, using a stylus like this. Um, and you can sometimes too, you can, you can actually have orthotics made. So a stylus may also fit on your hand and, um, it can make it easier for selection. So some of the other ones that I was going to show you is, this is just another symbol based one where, um, again, you can generate your own language. This is a child's form. Going to. Church. I am going to church. Okay. Um, and there's a range of different, that, that one's a 60 location. We can actually change it and make it increasingly complex as well. There's an 80 position one that has a keyboard right there as well as the difference. So you can adjust the size of the symbols to accommodate the needs. It is. Hello. 
Okay. And you might want to use the keyboard as well. And there's the prediction. Conference. It is a very good conference. So you have the potential to either use some of the words that are there already for making your sentences, and it automatically projects things like you use I, now you, all of a sudden you have a whole bunch of verbs that come up. You say I am, now your verbs are, all have the appropriate tense as well. Eating. And you might go to your food. Pizza. So that's just another symbol-based one. That one is called touch chat. Proloquo to go is one that a lot of people have heard about. Um, it has a text-based version as well as a symbol-based like this. Um, Okay, but then we can also go into here and we can use, go to typing view, and again we can type. Hello. One of the things you can do with this, um, one of the settings for this app as well, um, and I believe predictable has it as well. I'm going to just adjust it. If we go to our access method, and if we do select on release, rather than select when you press down, um, I'm going to show you. So now I can drag my finger across, and um, it's the letter that I may. I lift my finger up off. So sometimes that might be a little bit easier. So this is set up for first finger up. So then the first finger that I lift is the one that, um, but for some reason it's not working. Um, but it is a facility that these apps have as well to allow you to drag and I think it might work. I'm just going to see if it's perhaps only in the grid it's going to work. Yeah. Hi. I like that. I like that. So again, these features used to be only available on the very expensive dedicated devices, but now many of these applications for iPads have these features that allow for assisting someone who has fine motor difficulties in accessing these keyboards. Okay, any questions about any of these? Okay. What I'm going to do is, um, between now and the panel discussion, I'm going to be in room C where the exhibition was, and I'm going to have a number of these devices available. So if someone would like to come over and just have a little exploration and see how it might work, um, then I'll be available for the next half hour or 45 minutes until the panel discussion starts. Okay, well thank you very much.